Hi there, my name is Randy McEntee. I'm a flame artist at the Department of External Services and co-founder of Logic TV. Welcome to Logic Academy. In this video, we're getting you up to speed with Aces in Flame in only eight minutes. Welcome to Eight Minute Aces. Before we dive in, thanks to Autodesk for sponsoring this video. Like the good compers we are, let's mess with someone else's pictures. Thankfully, the Academy has a handy dandy kit for us already. Download these and put them somewhere convenient. They are amazing for troubleshooting and I use them all the time. Now, let's open these up in flame. Check it out. The Academy has already done all the work for us. We have the super helpful kit with every conceivable IDT, ODT, LMT, RRT, ODT, and BLT you can imagine. For now, we're going to assume you're a beginner, so let's focus on the most common image types. In the ASUS CSC folder, here are several examples of common original camera negatives, or OCN. Canon log, S log, V log, Red log, all the logs. I work in commercials, and here's the log C Alexa wide gamut from Ari that I work with constantly. With from file or rules enabled, you can see that Flame does a really good job of choosing the right color space based on the given file names. You can build a really robust system with tokens in the color management input rules. Get in the habit of tagging clips manually. All the cool kids are doing it. Here's an example. This rule looks at every file, and if it has logic in the name, it automatically tags it as sRGB. Create some custom rules for your pipeline, and it'll save you a bunch of time and headaches. Let's grab a couple more examples. Here is ASUS 2065-1. It's the ASUS storage format. It's designed to be able to contain every conceivable color you can see, but it's not at all helpful to work in. Great working color spaces are the ASUS CCT for log, and the ASUS CG for linear. And here's good old Rec 79. The viewing rules give you different options based on the tag of your clips. The ASUS 1.1 project defaults are really thorough, but it's also way more than anyone working commercials really needs. I recommend a more simple approach. Delete all of them. Yes, all of them. And then add one back in, or one rule to rule them all. This rule is smart enough to make any clip that is tagged as either log or linear and make it look correct. The goal of ASUS is to take any image of the real world with a known source and make it look like it did in real life. Its goal is to remove all the funky stuff that each camera manufacturer does to its own images so that we can store them, combine them, and make them into something useful. If you've tagged everything correctly, each of these images will look identical, and that's the entire goal of this process. Bypass the viewer, and you'll see what these look like before Flame and Aces has done its magic. Now, let's practice moving an image from one Aces flavor to another. Let's take this Aces 2065-1 and convert it to something we can more easily work on and composite with, like Aces CG. Grab a color transform, set it to input transform, and choose Scene Linear ASUS 2065-1 to Scene Linear ASUS CG. And that's it. Notice they look identical, but now the math and the encoding of this image are such that it's perfect for compositing. Why should you care? Well, sometimes you can get away with not knowing what kind of operations should happen in what color space. And sometimes you can't. And when you can't, you'll need a solution. For example, ever perform a rack defocus and notice it looks kind of muddy? Something's off about it. It's not behaving like it ought to in the real world. Well, it's because the defocus operation ought to be performed on a linear image. Here are a few examples. Check out how nice this blur looks on the ASUS CG image. Of 
versus the ACES CCT image. It's because the math behind the clip mimics how light works in the real world. And Log and Rec.79, well, they don't do that. For a list of compositing operations and what color spaces they best work in, visit this link on the forums. And if we need to return our image back to ACES 2065-1, just copy the original color management node and hit invert. Boom, it's that easy. Now, what about these synthetic charts? Have a closer look with your color picker. See the crazy values? These synthetic charts are designed to very obviously expose flaws in your pipeline. For example, let's take this clip and just re-tag it as what it already is. Boom, we just broke our pipeline. Why? Because we rounded from 32-bit to 16-bit. If we change the 16 to 32-bit, we're good. Sometimes breaking the image is necessary. Remember a few minutes ago when I described ACES as being designed to take any image of the real world and undo all the funky stuff happening in the camera? Well, what about logos and graphics? Well, they aren't from the real world. They have never been photographed through a camera. So according to ACES, they don't really exist. Let's take this Rec. 7 or 9 clip and try to convert it to ACES CG with an input transform. Do the image changed. But look at the values. These values do in fact make sense and will behave well when composited, but at the expense of changing what it looks like. Another option is to do a view transform. View transforms are destructive in that they're designed to show you what your image will look like if viewed on a different device. They aren't intended to be baked into anything. Hence, a rec to ACES CG, well, it doesn't exist. But we can hack it anyway by doing an ACES CG to Rec 79 view transform and then inverting that. Boom. Okay, at first glance, it looks correct, but check out these numerical values in the highlights. This was a little less than white in Rec, but in ACES CG, it's now super bright. ACES really can't deal with this kind of stuff. So, in this situation, I recommend dealing with Rec 79 images later on in the composite, when you can convert to it. Or there's absolutely no reason you can't do this work in ACES CC or ACES CCT or any other log space, which has none of these crazy problems. In a timeline environment, the color management is so good because it never shows you images incorrectly. So it's super easy to forget to add an input transform before exporting. Just add a color management gap effect. See how the tad clip tells the viewer to display this image as Rec. 7 or 9? And when I toggle back and forth between my OCN and the Rec output, it looks identical. But the image is now encoded as Rec. 7 or 9 and is ready for export. See how these clips look identical? But when I bypass the viewer, we see them in their original state. There you have it, 8 Minute Aces. If you have any questions or comments, look me up on the forums at forum.logic.tv. If you enjoyed this Logic Academy, let us know. And if there's something you'd like to see, be sure to drop us a line. I'm Randy McEntee, and you're watching Logic.